Hello, my friends. I'm Clover, and today we're solving something a little bit out of the ordinary. So this is a puzzle by Philip Newman. It was originally posted in GAS on July 14th, 2024, and it's called The Very Little Caterpillar. And so first of all, a little backstory of where this puzzle came from. So Philip and I recently had the opportunity to participate in a very interesting project by the YouTuber and puzzle setter Meme Rister, uh, who was um, streaming, the, this was yesterday actually that Philip got to make his contribution to this, streaming the process of setting a very large series of linked 6x6 six six Sudoku puzzles by a variety of different setters, uh, with the end result being a giant linked caterpillar of puzzles. And Philip made a pretty infamous contribution. I really enjoyed watching the process and also watching chat react once they realized what Philip was up to. Um, you can see that on Memorister's channel, Memorister Puzzles, on YouTube. And Philip also apparently got inspired by the process of setting little linked 6x6 Sudoku and made this for today's gas. So let's have a look. So each of these grids is a 6x6 Sudoku. So standard 6x6 Sudoku rules apply in all of them. So we're placing the digits 1 through 6 once each in each row, each column, and each of these outlined 2x3 regions. There are four different 6x6 grids, and one thing that's worth being careful about is that even though it looks like, for instance, these two cells are in the same row because they're physically located in the same row, they could easily contain the same digit because they're not technically within the same grid. So this cell is only within the first grid, and then this cell is not in the first grid at all. It's in fact just in the overlap between the second and third grid. So cells that are in overlapping areas have to follow Sudoku rules in both of their grids. But if two cells are not in the same grid, it doesn't matter if they kind of see each other, if they appear to be in the same row or column, they could still have the same values. So like this cell could also have the same value as this cell because those aren't in the same grid. The first grid is a classic 6x6 Sudoku. The second grid is a ratio pairs Sudoku, so black dots indicate pairs of cells that have digits that are in a 1 to 2 ratio. In other words, one of them is twice as big as the other. So for example, this could be 3 and 6, or 2 and 4. Not all black dots are necessarily given. This is an arrow Sudoku, and an arrow Sudoku, for each arrow, the digits along that arrow have to sum to the number that is in the attached circle. We do have one circle here that has two different arrows, and the rule for that is that each of the two arrows has to separately, independently sum to whatever's in the circle. So in this puzzle, that means that these two have the same value, and also these two sum to whatever that value is. And then finally, we have a thermometer Sudoku in the last of our 6x6 six six grids along each of these thermometer shapes, and again, we're considering these guys kind of independently from each other that share a bulb, the digits have to increase starting from the round bulb and moving towards the tip of the thermometer. And that should be all we need to know to solve this. So let's start with the classic. So we need to place a four in row one. It can only go there. So these are gonna be five and six. There's a five here, so that will be five and six in that order. We need a six in region one. There's a six in this column, so six will go there. And then our last digit there is a three. Three in region three has to go here because of these two threes. And then one in region three can't go in those cells. There's a one in the column, so it'll go there. Five can only go there in the region and four will go there. Then we'll finish off this column with a two and we'll finish this column with a four. These two cells have to contain one and three. These have to contain 1 and 2 to finish the column, and because there's already a 2 here, we know the order of those, and we know the order here. And these cells will have 5 and 6, there's a 5 there, so they go in this order. These three cells contain 1, 2, and 6. This one can't be a 1 or a 6 either, so this is a naked 2. This is the last cell in its row, so that's a 4. We need to place 1 and 6 here in that order. 1 goes there, 2 goes there. So that's our first grid. Now for our second grid, these two cells have to be in a 1 to 2 ratio, but we can't use a 1 or a 2, so they have to be 3 and 6. Meaning these two cells are 4 and 5, but we can't put a 5 on a ratio dot, because there is no number in 6x6 six six Sudoku that is in a 1 to 2 ratio with the number 5. So this will be a 4, that'll be a 5. 4 is in a 1 to 2 ratio with 2 only. And then the only position we can place 5 in column 2 is there, and then these are going to be a 1 to 4 pair. 
So now these cells contain 2, 3, and 6. So these two are 4 and 5. So what's our next move here? We need 1, 3, and 6 here. This pair cannot be 3 and 6, because if it was, we would have a serious problem in this row. We wouldn't be able to put anything at all in this cell, and then we'd have just a 1 here, and then where would we put 2 and 4 in the same cell? So those can't be 3 and 6. So these are either 1 and 2 or 2 and 4. Um, these guys, okay, what can these be? So they could be 1 and 2 in that order. They can't be 2 and 4 because neither of those numbers can go in that cell, or they could be 3 and 6 in this order. These guys could also be 1 and 2, they could be 3 and 6 in this order, and once again they can't be 2 and 4 because neither of those numbers can go in this cell. So now we have a 1, 6 pair in these cells. That gives us a 3 here and resolves this and resolves that into a 1 as well. This is now going to be a 6. We can't place a 1 in these cells, so that is a 2-4 pair. And then these will be 3 and 5. There's a 3 there already, so there's my 3, there's my 5. The 3 resolves this into the 2-1, and this into the 3-6. Okay, this is now a naked 4. That's the only number that can go in that cell. These are going to be 2 and 3 in that order to finish the row. The 3 makes this a 6. The 2 resolves our 2-4 pair. These will be 1 and 5. Don't know where those go yet. This can't be a 6, so my 6 in the column goes there, and then that's a 5. That makes this a 1 and a 5, which resolves the 4, 5, and finishes this grid. These two cells are 2 and 6. Now, 6 can't ever go along an arrow that has a length greater than 1, because that would make the bold have to be bigger than 6. So this must be my 2, and this is my 6. Okay, so this is 2 plus something. The something is either 1, 2, or 5, because that's when I need to finish this row. Can't be 5, because 5 plus 2 is too big. So this is either 1 plus 2, which is 3, which breaks because I have a 3 in the column, or it's 2 plus 2, which is 4, which is good. So I eliminate 2 from there. Now these cells have to contain 1, 2, and 6 to finish this column. Bear in mind that we're not looking at these cells for this column, because those are not part of the same grid. We're only looking at these 6 cells. So we need 1, 2, and 6, but 6 can't go on either of these arrows here. So 6 must go there, and then this is a 1, 2 pair. Okay. Now, 1 can't go in those cells, and 1 also can't go here, because whatever goes in this bulb has to be the sum of two digits. So 1 must go there. That makes this either 1 plus 1, which is 2, or 1 plus 2, which is 3. That has to be the same as this cell, so that's also 2 or 3. But it can't be 2. So these are threes, that's a two, and that is a one. Now we need to place a four and a six here to finish this row. We can't put a six on the arrow, so that's a four. Four plus five is too big, four plus one is perfect. These cells are now going to be two and three in that order. These are going to be one and six, and now we need two, four, and five. This is a naked five, and these are gonna be two and four. This can't be 2 just because the only way we could possibly make it 2 would be 1 plus 1. We can't put a 1 in this cell because there's already a 1 in the region. So that's a 4. That makes this a 3 and makes this a 1. Finishing off our column here, this is now a 6. We place a 2 and a 5 to finish this column and a 3 and a 4 to finish this column. Finish this row with a 5 and we need 4 and 6 to be done. These digits now are 2 and 4. This can't be a 4 because if this was a 4, to increase along this long thermometer, we'd have to go 4, 5, 6, which would place two fives in this column. It's not that they have to be consecutive, just to be clear. Thermos don't necessarily have to increase consecutively, but the thing is, if we had a 4 here, the only way to have two digits that are bigger in a 6 by 6 is for them to be 4, 5, 6. If this was a 3, we actually could get away with it. It would be like 3, 4, 6, or something like that. But in this situation, that can't be a 4. That's got to be a 2. And because that's a 2, this has to be lower, and it is a 1. These cells will contain 2 and 5. 2 can't go on the end of a thermometer that is 3 long. So that'll be a 5, that will be a 2. And now I need to place a 6 in this region somewhere. 6 can't go on the middle of a thermometer, so it goes here. Now that will be 3 and 4. So now this has to be bigger than 2, so it's 3 or 4. Can't be 5 or 6 because those are already used here. Now this must be 4, 5, or 6. In this column, I need to place a 1, and the only place I can put it on this thermometer is at the tip, or is at the bulb. I also need to place a 2, 
I can't put it down here at the end of the thermometer. It's got to go there. And then this will be either 3 or 4. Now this thermometer, the first digit is 1, 2, or 3. Second one is 2, 3, or 4. 3, 4, or 5. 4, 5, or 6. Now the last digit can't be a 6, which means that can't be a 5, that can't be a 4, and that can't be a 3. There's a 2 in this region and in this column, so this is now a 1. There's a 2 in this row, so that's a 3, which makes this a 4 and makes this a 5. That can no longer be a 4. The 4 here resolves this 3, 4 pair, so that's now 1 or 2. This is either 5 or 6 because it's bigger than 4, so it is a 6. And I need 1, 2, and 3 to finish the region. I have 1 and 3 in the column, so this is a naked 2, and the rest of that region resolves. These are going to be 2, 3, and 4. That must be a 3. And that all resolves. Now I need 5 and 6 along this thermometer. They go there and there. And here I'm going to need 3, 4, and 6. These can't be 3 because there's a 3 in the column, so there is my 3. 1, 4, and 6 here. That's going to be resolved to a 6. That's becoming a 4. And we are done. And that is how you solve Philip Newman's very little, very little caterpillar. I hope you enjoyed that. I definitely enjoyed that. I thought that was a little bit of a change of pace. That was kind of cute and fun, a little bit different. And if you want to solve it yourself, the link to do so is in the description below this video. Hope you enjoyed that, and I will catch you next time.